Blender 4 is finally out and with it, a lot of new changes all across the board. But since this is an animation channel, I wanna go over some of the most important features that really affect us animators. Now here are the top five new and improved animation features in Blender 4.0. I extracted this information from Blender's uh, official overview as well as a Beacon presentation on the new animation features to save you guys some time. But if you want to watch those videos in full, I'll have a link in the description for you as well. Let's hop in. The Asset Shelf. This is probably the most significant improvement in the new version of Blender. This is fantastic because instead of switching your entire panel to the asset browser, you can now view all your poses underneath your 3D view outliner. To activate the asset shelf in your 3D viewport, you wanna to go to view and then check off or check on, in this case, the asset shelf. Now, if you check it on and you notice that nothing happened, you can see here that it's actually checked on. Well, that's because you have to be in pose mode and not in object mode. The second you switch to pose mode, you can see that all my poses are here. Another cool feature on this shelf is that when you click the little three lines here, you can go ahead and check different categories that you want to see. So in this case, I checked on all of them. And so I can go and only look at brows or only look at expressions or only look at mouth poses. Now, some of the features of the asset shelf, aside from being able to click on a pose and let's choose this frame right here and let's say we want to have a confused expression. So you can click on the pose and change the expression to the one you clicked on or you can click and drag and you can gradually get to that pose or you can subtract it by going left. So go in the opposite direction. You can also right click and apply pose flipped. And so this gives you the flipped version of the pose. So here's the original, here's the flipped version. So to bring up the asset shelf, you can also see there's a little arrow here in my viewport. You click on this arrow and it brings it up as well. And finally, the last feature is, of course, you can click and drag on the pose. But while you're going forward and backwards, you can actually hold control and it flips the pose mid blend. Let's control Z those changes. Now, the next thing that I'm really actually excited for, it's simple, but I'm excited for it, is incremental saving. This was something I did a lot. I do a lot, but I used to do a lot in Maya, but now Blender has it too. Previously, if you wanted to save incrementally, you would have to go to file, save as, and then click this little plus button to make a new version and then save that. Now you can just go to file, and save incremental and instantly it saved a new version of my file where it doesn't overwrite the previous file but makes a new file and gives it a number at the end and that number increases the more incremental saves you do this is perfect because files can get corrupted you could make mistakes so having multiple versions of your file is great to keep your work safe editing multiple f-curve modifiers you can now you know what, I'll show you an example. So let's select all the translations on May and I'm gonna add a noise modifier. So now all three of them have a noise modifier. This is what that looks like. Uh, but what you can do now is go to scale and let's say I only have location X selected. And when you scale this, only location X gets affected. So let's reduce the strength. But what you can do now is let's select all three just so you can visually see. And if I try and scale this, you can see that only one of them gets affected, which is the same for the previous versions of Blender. But what you can do now is hold Alt and this will affect all of the modifiers and not just one. So if I'm not holding Alt, it just affects the first one. But if I'm holding Alt, all of them get affected. So this used to be super annoying because before you would have to go curve by curve and affect that particular curve uh, with these settings right here. But now you can affect all of them at the same time. And since we're talking about modifiers, there's a new Butterworth modifier. And how you access this is by pressing Alt-S, selecting your curves, pressing Alt-S 
on the graph editor and these are the previous uh, smoothing options but now we have Buttersworth smoothing and now you can drag and smooth out the curve and this is a perfect tool for cleaning up something like mocap and you can smooth out your curve as much as you want uh, so when you get mocap usually the graph looks very messy there's sharp edges everywhere so this can help really clean that up and save you a ton of time just a really quick interjection to let you know that due to all the new assets and lessons we've been adding to our ultimate animation course we'll be increasing our prices january of 2024. so if you're looking to take your animation skills to the next level consider locking in the current prices and get lifetime access to all current and future lessons and assets now let's hop back into the video there's also been some new graph editor features which have been integrated into Blender, letting us manipulate curves through different operations. Now, what does that mean? Well, you can press Alt D and you get a list of different options and they each perform a different task or a different operation. This is very similar to NMAID, the free add-on that we love using. And this new feature is actually created with the help of the AnimAid creator. So he's helping Blender develop its tools to match what AnimAid offers. New parent space transform option. Now this is a new option that's right here. You can change uh, your transform orientation from global, local, or all these other ones to now parent. So in global, you can see that both the sphere and the cube, and the cubes are parent here, share the global transform orientation. If you go to local, you can see that this is the cubes, this is the top, this is the side, and the spheres is completely different from the cubes. So what you can do is switch this transform orientation to parent, and now the child, that's the sphere, shares the same up and side and down as its parent so when we go back to the cube you can see in local that translate z is the up translate x is the side and when you come to the cube you can change this to parent and now translate z is the up and then translate x is the side it's a cool little update now lastly the graph editor's performance was increased by a huge amount you can now have an insane amount of controllers and key selected and browse through the graph editor without any issues. There's a lot more to look forward to in the near future, like animation layers, replacing the really confusing NLA track workflow to make animation a lot more seamless and a lot easier in Blender. Or the super handy ghost thing so you can see previous and next keys like you do in 2D animation. But we can talk about these features more once they're actually released. Let me know down below which features excite you the most and what features you're hoping that Blender implements in the future. Now software features are fantastic, but what matters is your ability to animate. And so you really want to be making sure you're not making these animation mistakes right here.